I hope we've all brought sacred cows with us this evening, because of course the point of bringing them is that we destroy them. If we are to seriously engage the conversation of sovereignty, consciousness in action, uh, becoming our own masters of our own lives, and getting the status quo to stand down from systemic corruption, systemic genocidal agendas, blood economy, the stuff that's been going on now for millennia. Actually, if we understand the cosmogenesis of the human story, the DNA, the galactic DNA I'm talking about, it's a incredible story. And it goes back hundreds of thousands of years. In point of fact, it goes back millions of years. But let's bring it to today. And what do we have? Dream spell is the seminal theme of the human story, the human condition. We're variously harvested, enchanted, seduced, engineered, manipulated into one spell or another. We must own that. We must recognize that. In the words of the delightful Terence McKenna, culture is not your friend. This is a hard one for us to understand because we're even suckered into believing that religious mythos is a beautiful thing. That cultural mythos is a beautiful thing. Traditional values. No. Uh-uh. No. That's mind control. That's dream spell. That's the mechanics of stealing away your sovereignty, my sovereignty. I'm talking about my capacity as a living soul to be able to command my own destiny, to steer this planet, to steer this star system to where we want it to be, our highest expression. So where do we choose to place our attention? We're living in a foundationally parasitic paradigm. Think about it. We're feeding off each other. We're eating each other alive. We devour one another as cultures, as faiths, as nations, as individuals, as societies, as communities, as civilizations. These are all the same model and it all comes down to you. So we can choose to project our plasma, which is our life force, to participate in that parasitic game, which the world invites. We're encouraged to do so. We're encouraged to be that kind of animal in this world. Dog eat dog, survival of the fittest, time is money, all that bullshit. Or conversely, we project our plasma into the field with empathy, with love, with all the right stuff, and we begin to manifest, we become the creator. So the parasite or the creator, which you choose. We have the power, the majesty in our DNA to be either or. The system will only insist that you're a parasite, that you live in a paradigm where bankers screw you for money, where doctors screw you for money where teachers screw you for mind control. I think you know what I'm driving at here. Doctors don't have the freedom to doctor, to heal. God knows that if you have a cancer cure, you go straight to prison. Well, now that's great, isn't it? We're told that the single biggest killer on earth is cancer, you know, mutation of cellular systems. And yet we're also told by the same status quo that having a cure for that cancer is illegal and you can't claim it. Now that should tell us a little bit about the society that we have allowed. Modern spellbinding. This is, this is it. This is the story. This is our story. Iconoclasticism, idolatry, worship of false light. That's what it is. What have we got? Top left, Adolf Hitler, the big, bad, scary guy. Well, that's a that's a very compelling spellbinding. Anyone knows anything about the real history of the Second World War, and I'm not gonna go into that here, there's not enough time. 
But if anyone does know the truth about the Second World War, you will know that 90% of the facts that we spout about the Second World War were introduced in 1952 into the school books. Prior to that, it was a very different story. Now, do the hard work. Go and study the autobiographies of Stalin, of Churchill, of de Gaulle, of Roosevelt. The guys who were around at the time, the, 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 the heads of state, go and study their own words written between 1945 and early 1950s, and you will see the truth is nothing to do with what we're told. That's a classic example, spellbinding. We've been given a narrative. That narrative was dreamt up for us and has been drip fed into the curricula all around the world. The British Empire drove that principally. It's an Anglo-American conspiracy backed up by a delightful Zionist enterprise, but we won't go there tonight. Beneath Adolf Hitler, uh, Osama bin Laden, classic psyops, classic spellbinding, dreaming up the bogeyman, can't quite find him, can't quite put our finger on him, he's somewhere in the Hindu Kush. Oh, up comes a video of someone who looks like him saying something that plays perfectly in to the political narrative. Delightful. Mother Teresa, if anyone knows the truth about that Albanian lady, it's not what we popularly believe it to be. It's shocking, it's horrifying for people, especially religious devotees in the Christian faith, to come to terms with the truth. But what do you want? Do you want false light worship or do you want the truth? The truth is there, but you need to not be blinded by the false light to get to it. Uh, Barack Obama, another classic example, era of hope. I don't think so. Anyone who studies and knows the facts knows that Barack Obama amped up the war machine, something like 300% from what uh, George Bush uh, left off. But the way the delivery was gift wrapped became acceptable, became palatable to us. This is dream spelling. This is spellbinding. It invites us again and again and again into false light worship. Bill Gates, one of the icons dreamt up in the modern context. Um, supposed to be a great philanthropist. No, vaccination programs. You need to be aware of that. There are Supreme Courts in the world taking him to task for desperately serious high crimes. That's an example again of spellbinding. And then, of course, the great one, Che Guevara. Bullshit, murderous creature. Man of his times, absolutely barbaric and yet we see the symbol we see the hat we see the star staring off into the middle distance the brave gorilla the the hipster the counterculture revolutionary ah, 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 ah. that my friends is a psyops drip fed generationally to you and me learn the truth of these things I did spend time with a man who was uh, alongside Che Guevara and Fidel Castro. But the point I'm trying to make is that these are icons, idols. It's false light worship. It's all it is. And we need to own this if we are going to break the spells and move into our power. It's as simple as that. It's not complex. Let's move on. Democracy, the ultimate con. Well, all you need to do is look at the United States of America today to see that it is Punch and Judy. It's all it is. It's all it ever was, actually. Literally. Punch has got your attention. Oh, Judy's got, oh, Punch, oh, Judy's got your, oh. Right, that's it. Hegelian dialectic, dreamt up for us humans to bewitch us, to confuse the hemispheres, okay? Where you're never quite 
on one side of the equation or the other. And that's bewitchment, archetypal meltdown. These are the posters that drove generations to their deaths. Be clear about this. Be crystal clear in your own minds about this as we explore pure truth. These posters were put up, when around the world and effectively spellbound people into sacrifice of innocence, sending their kids to war, okay? Millions of them. Uphold our honor, join the army, the navy, the marines, join the team, you know, be, be one of the crew. They're horrific. The patriotic fund will care for you. How much will you give to country? You were already paying for the war. <laughs> it was already our taxes back in the day paying for the goddamn war. Oh, it's not enough. Give more. And where were the bankers? Where were the charlatans, the rogues, the Babylonian priests, as I call them, conducting the war, funding both sides of every equation? Harvest of innocence. Pure and simple. The point is, we are permissioning it, and we're permissioning it today. I grew up in a war in Africa. I know a little bit about being on the wrong end of guns. But government does equal taxes, and taxes equals blood economy, and that, my friends, is modern Canaanite ritualism, whether you like it or not. Can we apprehend ourselves in that story? Because it is a story that is made up of you, and you, and you, and me. It's our story. We're all grown-ups, so mm. let's look at what we pay for. Let's look at what we countenance. Let's look at what we permission. Barbarism. It's all it is. I have recently interviewed the former head of the CIA, Special Operations, and uh, he's informed us about the truth of the intelligence uh, networks. Ambassador Gilmore uh, over here used to have top secret clearance. He knows a little bit about what goes on in the back room as well, and we'll speak to that a little bit later, no doubt. The result of what we permission is a culture of idolatry, okay? We are parasitic and parasites in as much as we are feeding on false light, buying the spells, and then selling them to one another, generationally, okay? All forms of worship in that sense equate to the surrender of our life force. And this is what I'm really drilling down to. Okay, the surrender, the willful, conscious surrender of our life force, where we place our attention. Do we permission it or do we not permission it? It is not good enough to pay the taxes and say, I've done my bit, it, what happens to, it's not, nothing to do with me. No, it is not acceptable. Beyond a certain point, if any of us are serious about our Islamic faith, our Christian faith, our Buddhist faith, our faith toward ideals, towards pure truth, we must have the courage to look at this stuff. We have to do it. And I said here in the bottom of this slide that the, the lower cap gods feed on this stuff. And it's true. The reincarnation cycles are a perfect testimony to that. Cultural spellbinding. Al Gore uh, taking the world by storm, uh, winning Nobel Prizes and getting uh, Hollywood awards and gongs and doing his PowerPoint presentation that completely lied about the status. Okay, I can't remember how many thousand of the cited climatologists in his own report are prosecuting now for the truth to become clear. But that cultural spellbinding is not to say that climate is not being affected by, by uh, environmental degradation. Of course it is, but that's not the point. The point is that Al Gore is and was working for the central bankers, trying to monetize air and sell guilt and fear and scarcity to humanity. Okay, a huge trillion dollar psyops. We bought it, hook, line and sinker. And today we've got the mayor of London saying, I'm gonna join together with all the mayors of big cities around the world and we're gonna fight for climate change. Really? And how the hell are you gonna do that? You gonna put on boxing gloves? Punch the clouds? Come now, come now. Speak to MI6. Speak to Her Majesty the Queen's intelligence infrastructure. Speak to the CIA. Speak to Mossad. Speak to our military industrial complex that we have paid for and permission 
since the 1940s when it really became dangerous. The sequestered technologies in the basement of our military industrial complex would eradicate all the world's woes like that. Tomorrow, environmental remediation technologies. I know it's my game. I was a director general in the United Nations for renewable energies for an IGO. I am close to that game, have been. I know what technologies we have. I know because I'm one of the people incubating those technologies. Free energy is with us. Zero point technology, quantum solutions that will remediate Fukushima in a heartbeat. There are big business models at work here, folks. And the status quo does not want you and I to interfere with that business model. And the truth, alas, alack, screws with that business model. Leonardo DiCaprio, God love him. I don't know uh, the man personally, because I have very little respect for the man uh, based on how he toes the, the line, because I know that he knows that the line is bullshit, the one that he's touting. Uh, I was actually supposed to be on Dr. Brooks Agnew's uh, expedition to the Arctic on the nuclear-powered uh, Russian icebreaker. There was too much ice in the North Pole to get the biggest nuclear-powered icebreaker through. That's the truth, because the Russians were saying, you can't, can't move in, there's too much ice. Putin knows that. There are psychological wars going on for the control of the way we think as a culture, as a peoples. And we are not going to learn anything from the Times or the Daily Mail. We're not going to learn anything from the associated news networks. These are foundationally criminal constructs run by often delightfully ignorant people. But it's up again to you and I to unplug from that. Civilizational spellbinding, and this is where it gets really big. So we have individuals. This is gender, sexuality, and there are patterns, memes, programs, software downloaded so that kids in Miami grow up in a certain way, the kids in Mozambique, uh, Lorenzo Marx, grow up in a certain way that all feed into the business model. They become good citizens. They pay their taxes. They turn a blind eye to the blood economy, okay? And they're ultimately harvested. Familial programs, how we, we indenture our own families into myths and spells by perpetuating the bullshit and telling, telling our kids the law of first report, what we heard or what we were taught. You see, this is it. This is this, and we do it to ourselves consistently. We should always destroy our sacred cows. We should always, every day, wake up and destroy all our sacred cows. Nothing should be sacred in that sense except for the sanctity of being present, being alive and alert to truth as it unfolds in front of us, what we see and touch and feel, not what we read in books. Scriptures, gospel, they're not the thing. They're fictions. I'm the organic, I'm the living. I'm not scripted. I'm saying what I'm saying because I feel it, because I mean it, because this is the conversation and it's the only one worth having. Cultural, social, spiritual, civilizational spellbinding. Guilt, fear, control, and idolatry. It's who and what we live by. That's our civilizational model, okay? We perpetuate it, we permission it. It's called dystopia. The status quo, all caps. The reason why I say all caps is because if anyone knows, when you fill your name out in block black capital letters on any form, government form, you've entered a contract. You've allowed the government to assign that contract to your birth bond, which is with the treasury. So they're making money out of you every time you sign a form. Your signature is being securitized. Governments will be tumbling in the next three to five years because of this. The truth is out. We all know about Hillary Clinton's high crimes, Bill Clinton's high crimes, the Rothschild's high crimes. We know about generational banking monopolies and those crimes and how they've rigged wars and how they've stolen all of our medical breakthroughs and all of our breakthrough technologies. We know all of this stuff already. Right, wake up to the real truth that you were securitized the day you were born and a birth 
the certificate was turned into a birth bond and you've been traded on the stock market effectively and securitized. This is serious stuff. Why? It's biblical. It's epic in the seriousness. It's called Canaanite ritualism, okay? It's what prophecy talks about and we're in it, but we're kept so very few of us understand how that works. And I wish I could spend five hours in a workshop doing Q&A because I would answer every question that I could and I'd put you in the right direction if I couldn't. So fear, time, money, war, disease, poverty, scarcity, entropy, and death. That's what we're sold. That's the big lie because none of that is true. Not even the death bit. The death bit is connected to DNA. We have, we have geneticists who have already managed to prolong the life of rats by seven times by simply amending the RNA, the DNA. There is a death gene programmed into humanity, okay? That's connected to our cosmogenetic story. Again, we don't have time to go into it, but that's something worthy of research. So what is at the root of our civilizational model? Sacrifice of innocence, surrender of sovereignty, equals false light worship, equals Luciferianism. That's scary for us to hear. No one wants to hear that. We all want to hear that everything's fine and that we're going to shuffle along and get through the day and we're going to celebrate our birthdays and our Christmas. Not good enough. How bad can it get? That's the question. Well, just ask Hollywood. They should know. Actually, you can go to Syria and ask any man, woman, and child in Syria, or Afghanistan, or Libya for that matter, or any number of the countries around the world that you and I have permission, our governments, to go and destroy, level, later waste. And I can take on any geopolitical argument. Cataclysm, the ultimate harvest of you and me. It's a program, people. It's a spell. It's all it is, a spell. And we can step out of it if we choose to. Apocalypse, the ultimate horror word, the ultimate horror theme, or is it simply the falling away of the mask? Actually, if you understand the meaning of the word apocalypse, it actually means the falling away of the skin, of the mask. That's all it is. So we should welcome all the horror I've just discussed because for the first time as a species, we're seeing it in monochrome, technicolor, all at the same time, right in front of us. Be here now. That's it. This is where the truth begins. This is where we sustain it. This is where we connect with it and go into phase coherence with it. It's between you and you and you. Uh, we could have a beautiful talk about fractality and about the Fibonacci series, the golden ratio and how the, the atomic structure within our body, within plants, uh, coheres to a certain mathematic and how that grows into a cellular form. And those cellular forms cohere also to those beautiful mathematical ratios. And how our body is a living embodiment of the entire universe. It's a beautiful thing. We are ultimately incredibly majestic. Synthesis, where doing and being become the same thing, the same quanta. Where what we do in life is our bliss. And how do we be about it? How do we feel about it? Blissful. That's what human beings are supposed to be doing and being. Surfing bliss, engaging with our majesty, not being harvested into the idea of time and doing jobs in order to make money, in order to pay bills, in order to pay the man, because that's all the bills do, pay for energy, pay for, for communication, transportation, lighting, heating, rent, energy bills. That's all we do. Our time is harvested into money, a, a totem. The opposite end of that spectrum is empathy, is where we step away from that monstrous construct that I just described in 15 minutes. The Holocaust, the apocalypse, the Armageddon, the worst ideas that we can behold and just let go of them. Their ideas, their cultural spells, they do not belong to me. I will not participate in them. My life is untouched by them because I say so and because my DNA says so. And when we all start cohering the resonance 
values of our DNA in the flame of pure truth, and I know it sounds a bit Kelty, but at the hyperdimensional level of physics, this is exactly how it works. But once the morphogenetic field actualizes, we change the hologram. We change the entire reality. It's happening right now in the United States. This Punch and Judy show is so in your face. It's so appalling that it's a perfect self-reflection, even to the most mundane American citizen who is recognizing, oh my God, is that us? Really? We've come to this, the land of the free democracy? It's beautiful. So I'm saying, find beauty in the cataclysm, find beauty in the apocalypse right now, because it is the emergence. The falling away of the old means the coming of the new, where absolution, redemption, salvation come about. And this has nothing to do with the middleman. Again, this is to do with you and you and how you engage with yourself, your own relationship with self and actualize as an individual. That then becomes a pattern of perfection within yourself. If you get that right and you will, it becomes a pattern of perfection in your family and then the society or the community, then the nation, then the culture, then the civilization. And this is where we need to be focusing our attention. That's the end of my uh, slideshow. The question remains, where shall we steer reality from here? Thank you. Thank you.